Good afternoon and welcome to our technical qualifications theory exam hints and tips webinar for the hair and beauty sector. I'm Sarah Fioda, I'm your hair and beauty technical advisor, um, so welcome today. If somebody can just raise their hand to let me know that you can hear me, that would be super. If we can see on this slide, um, I have a, um, a, a forms um, office survey for you to complete, or you can complete it by using by um, scanning the QR code. Now, please complete this survey because it's really important to me because these webinars are designed for you and by you. So any comments that you make um, on the um, survey would be um, very much appreciated. So the session is being recorded and the slides will be sent to all attendees alongside a recording and a CPD certificate after the webinar. Everybody's on um, obviously on mute, uh, but if you do have any questions, please put them in the question panel um, on the GoToWebinar. I am on my own today, um, so I won't be able to answer any questions at the end of this webinar because it's quite difficult to run a webinar and, uh, and look at questions at the same time. But what I will do is I will download all the questions after the webinar and um, make a, a frequently asked questions guide for you. And I'll obviously send that on with, the, uh, with the, a copy of the slides. If the session cuts off or you have any technical issues um, or I have any technical issues, I will record um, this webinar or the slides and I will make sure I email them to you directly. And if you end up having any, any um, sort of issues with connection, please just log off and dial back in again. So let's move on to the agenda for today. Again, we're going to look at support available for you. Um, and that's what I'm going to be focusing focusing on uh, exam guides, chief examiner's reports. We're going to look at some common command verbs or words. When we say verbs to learners, sometimes they don't understand a verb. So maybe the, with the new word for a verb is word um, and responses and how to support learners uh, with exam questions using theory, the, the theory exam. I'm also going to be looking at some types of questions and some examples, um, the retrieval of questions and some hints and tips for you to share with your learners, getting them ready for the summer series. Now, I'm not teaching you to suck eggs here, so some of you may already know what I'm going to, going to go through. So what support is available for you? you? You may have already seen that the spring series exam papers have been released and they're on our website with the mark schemes. Um, I would use these resources with your learners and go through the questions using them as a practice run through before the summer um, exam series starts. We have exam guides uh, for each technical qualification and the exam guides are a brilliant resource. Um, and I would suggest that you use these guides, these exam guides alongside the qualification handbook as you will, you will be able to see what units, outcomes and topics will be in the actual exam. The chief examiner's reports um, for the spring series are available uh, for all hair and beauty technical qualifications on the website. Um, and I would like to confirm um, to everybody that we will be running an autumn exam series um, again this year for any lear learners that need that third reset. So the exam guide information, um, I'd like to point you in the direction of this guide. Like I've said on the previous slide, it's such an important guide to work with. And again, it work, use this against working with the qualification handbook because it gives you so much information. I'm sure you already know about this, that it's available to you, but we have had lots of new centres uh, come on board for the first time with technicals over the last you know, 18 months. So please like, bear with me. Now the exam guide, um, the, there's a lot of information in this, in this and it really does give you the details um, and the format of the exam. Um, the content that will be assessed and it gives you guidance, on, uh, guidance and further information. So we're going to look on the next slide how this is broken down. So firstly, in the, in the guide, we have the details of the exam. 
this section gives you the details of the structure and the length and timing of the exam. For example, 6003520 paper exam and 6003020 online exam. So as we can see from this slide, the total uh, with a total of 60 marks that are available for the exam and they're comprised of uh, between 13 and 15 short answer questions and one extended response question. And as you can see on this slide, uh, the exam tests uh, assessment objective one, assessment objective two, and assessment objective four. Now, assessment objective one is the recall of knowledge within the exam, and that is worth 43% of the mark. Uh, that comes from uh, this assessment objective. For AO2, the candidates will demonstrate their um, understanding of different concept, concepts, theories and processes from a range of learning outcomes. And AO2 2 makes up 31% of the mark allocation. And then we have AO4. So a cand candidates here are applying their knowledge, understanding and skills from across the breadth of the qualification in a more integrated and holistic way. And that's normally in the form of a case study. Now, AO4 is that extended response question and it does make up 20% of the marks and it's a really important question. And what I would be saying at this stage, just looking at AO4, you know, as soon as the learners, you know, first six weeks in, I'd be giving them mini case studies to write up for my, for, you know, for themselves to be able to understand what this AO4 is, is all about because it does ask for you know that holistic view um how they're gonna how they're going to put all their units um into this sort of case study what sort of service and treatments are they going to be offering that client or in that scenario now let's take a look at the exam guide information if we go to the content assessed by the exam and this to me is the most important um, section of the exam guide and it's section two. And it tells you really that the content that's going to be um, assessed. So it gives you a summary of the units that will be tested. Now in this, in the qualification handbook for, level, for the level two beauty therapy, you teach nine units, okay? So you teach nine units, but you, as you can see from this slide, the candidates will only be tested on seven units and there are two units that are not tested and that is unit 203 which is waxing and 209 which is makeup so really so this is why it's so important to be able to look in the handbook and uh, and the exam guide and see exactly what units are going to be in that test you have to teach everything but at the end of the day there's two units that will not be tested. So I wouldn't be given a revision list on the makeup or um, the waxing units, so 203 or 209. I would be concentrating on the units that are actually here. So section two of the exam guide tells you the units, learning out outcomes and topics and number of marks that will be uh, tested. So if we look at one unit and i've just put that there for you 202 the principles of principles of practice for the beauty therapist now this unit has four learning outcomes but as you can see here only three of the learning outcomes will be tested and as you see not all topics uh, will be in the exam either so it, again it's really important to use uh, the exam guide alongside that qualification handbook to dive deeper um into into the obviously content and this will support you with your revision list for your learners we have guidance and this section gives guidance on the language um, of the exam the exam questions um, are written using command verbs or words and these are used to communicate to the, these should be used to communicate to the candidates um, the types of an, uh, answers required and i would really really make sure that your your learners your candidates familiarize themselves with this, the exam preparation, which is in this guidance. And then we have further information, and this section lists um, sources of information about the qualification um, uh, and the City and Guilds technical qualifications. Right, this slide is about the Chief Examiner's reports. These reports can be found on our website, 
the reports are really are really important tool to help you in preparing your learners. So the document uh, has been uh, prepared by the chief examiner. It's designed to be used as a feedback tool for centres to use in order to enhance teaching and preparation for assessment. So again, it's a really, really important tool to have a look at. And it's advised that this document be uh, referred to when preparing to teach. And, and then again, when getting learners uh, ready for sitting those uh, examinations. But the report does provide general commentary from the um, on the candidate's performance and highlights common themes in relation to technical aspects explored within the assessment, giving areas of strength and weaknesses demonstrated by the cohort uh, of candidates who sat the exam in March this year, so March 22 in that series. And it'll explain um, aspects which caused difficulty and potentially why uh, the difficulties arose whether it be caused by a lack of knowledge, incorrect examination techniques, or responses that fail to demonstrate the required depth of understanding. So the document provides commentary on the following assessment numbers. So that'll be 6003-020 or 6003-520 for, for the level two beauty therapy theory exam. Now we have these for absolutely every technical qualification across hair, beauty, and media makeup and nails. So if we have a little dive into the chief examiner's um, commentary here. So the overall uh, candidate showed strength um, in short response questions such as state list and show good knowledge when relating to a range of, of vocational topics. They were confident in their understanding of bacterial infections with higher performing candidates able to recognize both the condition and the characteristic of the bacterial infection infections and our candidates perform well um, to questions linked to practical skills for example when they were asked to explain the effects of massage techniques they um you know they were demonstrated that really really well um, they were also demonstrated good knowledge regarding different types of uh, eyelash treatments. However, some responses provided links to advanced treatments not covered within the qualification, such as semi-permanent makeup and microblading services. We're not looking; for, they're not going to get any more marks for putting semi-permanent in there or microblading. It's actually just sticking to what you are teaching them. So everything in that handbook that is highlighted in pink, you teach. Um, you go to the exam guide, you drill down and see what's going to be in there, what topics, uh, what learning outcomes and what topics, and make sure they just answer questions on the topics, not to advance um, to uh, more, more uh, you know, obviously more CPD qualifi uh, uh, qualifications, if you like. The majority of candidates as well demonstrated good knowledge um, of items within the manicure service, absolutely brilliant. There, we've got tools and equipment they were going to use, um, and how to be how these were going to store them under the COSH regulations. So, if we take a look at the commentary here, uh, where candidates seem to require more support. Um, and it normally comes from the anatomy and physiology. So the AMP um, continues to reflect a pattern seen, seen over previous years. It's not something new or uh, previous years and series is over those years. Candidates often struggle to explain in detail their understanding. They were able to know and identify points, but lacked structure and detail within the explanations. Higher scoring candidates were able to provide links and responses to wider to a wider range of vocational terminology and identify adaptations linked to specific treatments or clients' needs. And this is really, really quite important that they, you know, that they were some of them were able to use the vocational terminology, identify the adaptions, and link them to treatments. So those clients were, you know, those new clients' needs were met. The extended response uh, question showed further improvement from previous series, which is absolutely amazing. Really, really happy with this. Um, but there was lack of knowledge demonstrated um, of the anatomy and physiology. And I think we really, really need to, you know, 
sort of you know really work on this maybe have extra sessions for a and p so it was noted that candidates struggled to respond to recall questions relating to the structure of the hair follicle many candidates incorrectly listed um listed the responses that related to the structure of the hair instead of the structures of the follicle. So it's how they read this question. It's really important that they really read the question and understand what the question is asking um, from them. Many candidates also struggled with questions that related to the muscles and blood vessels of the lower leg and foot. And in some instances, candidates omitted to respond or state or, or stated incorrect responses. So they would answer half the question or just wouldn't respond at all. It was noted that a majority of candidates lack knowledge and understanding in relation to the regulations linked to manual handling operations. Uh, responses provided um, COSH and the Health and Safety at Work Act rather than the details that's required from the manual handling. So they were answering questions on the COSH and, and the you know health and safety at work act but they were not looking at what it was specifically asking for which was manual handling operations many candidates struggled to outline ad adaptations to manicure linked to specific conditions so they would candidates describe the normal manicure cure procedures with minimal reference made but high performing candidates were able to discuss and uh, the need for extra time by using a hot oil treatment, um, using ridge fillers, you know, maybe paraffin wax. So, you know, so some some higher performing candidates were able to extend um, their knowledge in the uh, show and show their understanding within the questions. So again, looking at the extended response question. Um, this uh, question gives candidates an opportunity to demonstrate awareness across the breadth of the beauty therapy of beauty therapy the overall response was well answered and showed a slight increase in performance levels from previous years and series but marks were lost where candidates provided very basic treatment plans that were not linked to the client's needs as outlined in the case study or the scenario and omitted they didn't use the aftercare advice or the you know their advice and guidance you know say you know when the client should come in next for a treatment how to upkeep um you know um i don't know their, their lashes um their, their, their waxing or whatever um marks were lost uh where the order of treatments were not discussed or they weren't in an appropriate sequence so again this is why it's important to start those case studies off early so you know they, they can get this order of sequence it's like running a column so if they were in a, in a in a salon or a spa they have to run a column so when they're writing that case study up it's about it's got to be in that logical sequence so there's no time wasted higher scoring candidates were able to provide a wider range of treatments and discuss discuss additional elements such as considerations um, of the client's outfit etc when reviewing colour choice options, which is absolutely super. Um, the better response is considered a range of treatment options and provided accurate justifications. Now, justification is a verb, so they justified um, the choices and recommendations made, uh, which is brilliant and safely con considered. Um, they included the, you know, the patch testing in there and checks for tactile testing uh, linked to diabetes. Candidates who achieved higher marks were able to make accurate reference to the treatment of Amelia, um, including possible causes, extractions and preventions. And they provided a range of bespoke and aftercare and home care options, which included a range of retail and return treatment services. This is really, really important for myself, the range of retail and return treatment services. 50% of our job is actually, as a, as a therapist or a hairdresser, is actually, you know, doing that hair. Uh, doing that treatment but we have to be able to retail and we have to be able to make sure that our clients come back to us that we want to rebook we want to rebook them so I always used to say when I taught you know um if you've got you've got a chair you've got a bed if you you make 50 pound an hour from your chair or your bed and you work eight hours a day five days a week you know times that 
50 pound by the, the how, many, how many of hours you're going to work. If you want to earn more money, you're gonna to have to work longer hours or more days. So the thing is, it's working smarter, not harder. So we have to get this into our, our learners' heads. It's working smarter, not harder. So retailing and rebooking is a massive part of our, um, of our job role. Also, candidates uh, would benefit from practicing examination techniques when preparing for the exam. Um, again, candidates need to be prepared for a range of exam questions and to understand the key command verbs and expectations of the question. And again, they, need, they really do need to read the question carefully so not to disadvantage themselves. Our, our learners, our type of learners, we know they skim through something and they go, yeah, yeah, I know the answer to that. And actually, they need to slow down, read the read the question, highlight the command verb. What is that question asking them for? Now, I've taken this from the level two beauty therapy um, uh, da, 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 um, qualification handbook. Sorry about that one. <laughs> Um, and how, how I've worked this out for you. On the slide, you can see uh, it's a level two beauty therapy exam. Um, again, I've already gone through some of the details showing the breakdown of the units, assessed in the theory exam and, a num and the number of marks allocated in each unit um, and how the three assessment objectives are weighed. So what I've done here um, is using the information from the exam guide which we know it's 60 marks. So that exam is 60 marks and 24 marks are going to come from A01 type of questions. So that's your, your recall of knowledge, um, which are going to be short, short questions, short answers, sorry. And this is what we know as a lower tariff mark. And 24 marks are going to be from A02, which is known as a medium tariff mark. And this, these sort of questions show the learner's understanding of concepts from across a range of learning outcomes. But AO4 questions we know um, is the application of knowledge, understanding and skill. And these questions are normally um, around a case study or scenario. And these sort of questions attract, uh, you know, that higher tariff mark. And they can be anything between six to 15 marks. So the exam paper we know is 12 marks. So they do require a higher level of response and they're usually marked um, against our band descriptors and we know we have our band one, our band two and our band three. So understanding uh, the use of command verbs or words in exam questions. So let's do a little bit of a deeper dive into the command verbs or command words and uh, how they are used. So a command word or verb is an instructional word in a question. And the command verb is a useful indicator of the type of response that the examiner is looking for. And they are also the sort of words and phrases that are used in assessment tasks that tells a student how well they should answer a question. So if we're using this detail against the example I showed you from 6003 on the previous slide, you can see the types of questions and level of responses the examiners will be looking for alongside the typical command verb or words used to prompt or promote the response. So if something is label, list, stay, identify, define, they all come under A01. And we know that's going to be a low tariff mark and, if, uh, and we know it's about recall of knowledge. And we know there are 24 marks allocated in this particular um, AO. Now, if we look at the AO2 here, it's a bit more in depth because it's about concept theories and processes here. So what we will be looking for is um, things like, um, going to, uh, they're going to describe or explain. And again, they're a median tariff. So it's about that description, that explanation that we're going to, they're the types of questions that will be asked. And as we can see, you know, six marks can come out from an, an AO2, whereas normally AO1 is between one and two, maybe three marks. If it's got four things to list, it's got four lines. 
So you'd, you'd list four things if it's asking you for that. That's going to be one mark each. Whereas the AO2, which is a medium tariff, which is a describe and explain type of questions, that can be up to six marks. And some of those can be an A, an, an A part of the question and a B part of the question. And if we look at the higher tariff, um, applying knowledge, uh, understanding and skill across the qualification, this is going to be um, where you really do discuss uh, and, and justify. And normally the question does start with discuss and justify why you've done X, Y and Z. And so the bands allocated here is in, in AO1, we're looking between one and two marks. So that's one or two answers could be up to four and four, four answers, which, which would be four marks. AO2 normally between two and six. Um, and that's a more detailed response. But AO4 is, we know is a, 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 off this um, exam, it's 12 marks. And, you know, really look at the band descriptors there to help your learners. Again, just breaking this down a little bit further, command verbs in exam papers are words your learners need to understand. These tell, these tell you what responses, as I've said, that the examiners are looking for. So below are some, are on the slide are some examples of command verbs um, that you may well see in the technical qualification exam theory paper. There are more examples and definitions in the teaching and learning uh, and assessment guide as well. So if we look at this slide, it's got explain, define, describe, compare, identify, summarize, calculate, illustrate and outline. It's typically, it's, it's really important that learners understand what is being asked of them. So if it's asking them to identify something, they need to know what identify means. If it's asking them to explain something, what we're asking them to explain. Typical command verbs uh, to test knowledge uh, are define, label, list, state uh, and identify. And again, they are sort of AO1 um, questions. And we know from this exam paper, there's 24 marks from AO1, typical command verbs um, to test understanding, which is explain why, suggest, and reasons for, and descriptions uh, come from AO2. And again, there's 24 marks to be, to be had in, in uh, an AO2. Well, again, the typical um, command verbs for uh, AO4 is, you know, to discuss, explain and justify. Justify is really, really important and it's going to be a topic, um, it's going to be a service, you know, it's going to be uh, what, they are, what they're going to do in that, um, in that scenario. And again, AO4 is 12 marks. Now on this slide, I'm not going to read all this out, I've just, this can, we, we do have this um, these ver command verbs can be found in the exam guide, but it's just giving you um, sort of I'm not going to read them all out. Like I said, I'm just giving you um, some important details here. And it, there's, two, there's another slide like this. So this slide and the next slide will support you and help you to drill into the detail and help you with preparing your learners uh, for the summer series. So on this slide, I've highlighted um, the, the you know the command verbs, which are, are really really important. For you to be able to go through with your learners and if you go on to past papers you will see the types of command verbs in those questions and it's really it's not about teaching them every command verb but the ones that you know are going to be in the exam paper so we don't use a full range of these verbs but and however any one of them can be used at any time depending but it's really really important for you to, to go through things like describe and describes AO2 and I've highlighted that there. Discuss is AO4. Explain is AO2. If I move over onto the next slide, let's look at our AO1s. Identify is AO1. Label AO1. List AO1. Name AO1. And state AO1. So it really, these are the types of command verbs that we really need to know that they know. What I would do um, if I was in, in centres now, I would take this um, from the uh, exam guide um, or you can take it off the slides that I'll send you out and I would make a game out of this. I'd, I'd have it on a big sheet of paper, laminated, and I would cut them up individually and I'd have command verb and explanation of, uh, and guidance and I would get them to do a matching task. So they actually, so you know that they know 
what uh, you know what state means give an answer clearly and definitely you know name give the technical name um to something so it would be a good starter task um before session and you know a good task when they've maybe finished a little bit earlier or they you know say they've got nothing to do there's always something to do now the next slide um I've just included a short activity here for you uh, and this is for your learners and what I've done is taken the command verbs uh, or words uh, that are mainly used in beauty therapy and hairdressing and put them onto this slide. I've also included a link here. This is an activity that you could do quickly with learners uh, and also learners could do this activity independently if they wanted to and this will help them really drill down into the meaning of these command words and remember the level of response that is required to uh, assess those higher grades or even to gain full marks. And it might be worth revisiting this, um, you know, just some basic um, different components of the question ahead of the next exam series. So it'd be a good sort of task to do with your learners and see if they could work, do this independently moving forward. And I've gave, given you some um, uh, uh, answers there as well um, for that sort of spidergram. Let's have a look at some exam techniques. So here we're going to look at uh, examination techniques for learners. So it's understanding exam questions, deconstructing, unpacking the question, retrieval um, and revision of uh, techniques some hints and tips and exam stress and anxiety and we know there's been lots and lots of variables variables this year for our learners where you know exam stress and anxiety has, has kicked in quite a lot so the next couple of slides I, i'm going to go through a few examples of different types of questions that will be on the exam guide so here um, we've got a typical exam guide. I've taken that from uh, 2018. So the use of past uh, sample papers and answer guides are on, the, uh, are on our website for you to use. Uh, the papers are, are all set in a similar way. So it's really important that we see that, that how that paper set out. So please use them. And if you're going to make up any questions of your own, try to set them out in the same format that will be um, like, like we have on our website. Like I said earlier, most learners don't really read questions properly. A hint and tip at the end of the session, make sure, make up questions from the, what, what you've taught them, the content of what you've taught that day and structure the question the same way as they would see it on the uh, exam paper. And, you know, try and provide printouts and fact sheets as revision guides for each unit. I mean, I remember being at school and we used to get like a, every week we'd get a, a, a spellings list and we had to go home and learn the spellings. You know, do sort of some sort of little fact sheets like that where you know you want them to be able to answer you that specific question on a unit or a topic um, and taking it from the exam guide, you know, from the seven units in this, in this qualification that will be on the exam. So unpacking our questions. So unpacking the questions, short answer, recall questions. These have a restricted response. And these are questions that require the, the learner to give a brief and concise written response. And the number of marks available will correspond to the number of pieces of information or examples and the length of the response required by the question. So if we look at this question, it's question 10. And it's asking the learner to state four tools that can be used by a therapist when treating cuticles during a, a pedicure treatment. So it's looking for just direct, you know, answers. One mark for each, which is going to be four marks. So a hoof stick, a cuticle knife, cuticle nippers or cuticle cutters, orange stick or wooden stick. So they could get, they'll get four marks there. So if they just wrote hoof stick and cuticle stick, they're only going, only going to get two marks. So it's being really asking them to state for four marks. Now that was an AO1 type of question, moving on to the AO2 type of question. Again, unpacking the question correctly. Uh, again, this is short, this is a short answer question, but the word here is understanding questions and it's a restricted response. 
So these are questions uh, which require the candidate to give a brief and concise written response. And the number of marks available will correspond to the um, information and examples, just like the previous. So we're looking at question nine here. And what this question is asking them to do is explain. The command verb there is explain. So they have to explain the benefits of using effleurage techniques when providing a facial massage treatment. So it's asking them to do that. And we know here, you know, there's a good six marks for this one question. So it's asking them, the acceptable answers are, it introduces touch to the client, yeah? It's used uh, to transition into another move. It's used to apply product all over the skin. It soothes the nervous system. It stimulates the blood supply. Uh, it stimulates the movement of lymph. Now they're all brilliant, but if they can get all those six that I've just, I've just obviously said there, then we need an explanation. So it introduces touch to the client. It soothes. It smooth. It smooth. It soothes, warm, relaxes the muscles. So it relaxes the muscles. Yeah, it warms the muscles up and it relaxes the muscles. It's used in, in the transition to another move. Exactly, ensuring that constant flow that you know that we you know we're tactile with the client. We don't remove our hands from one massage move to the next massage move. It's used to apply product over the skin. To exactly. To, to ensure an even distribution um, and the absorption of the oil. Uh, it soothes the nervous system, so it aids in the client's relaxation, helps them to relax while on the bed. It stimulates the blood supply to an area or target uh, tissues, and obviously bring in oxygen and nutrients. That's, absolutely, that's all they would have to write. They could write as well to aid cell renewal. Both of those are right. It stimulates the movement of lymph, lymph to aid uh, to aid the removal of cellular waste, um, excess, and fluid toxins. So it, it, it is how they answer these questions. So you've got six marks, and it's it's the six key points in there that the examiner will be looking for. Unpacking AO2 um, correctly, this is where we have, you know, that uh, A and B part of the question. Our learners are great at doing the A part because it's asking them, you know, it's that AO1 sort of answer, which is saying identify state list label. Um, so this one's asking for two, uh, identify two massage techniques, but it's also asking a B part, which is saying describe one of the massage techniques. So fix A, the answers are effleurage and petrosage, but 6B would be either effleurage or petrosage. You don't have to do both. But what they would do is write, you know, effleurage is, is smooth, um, smooth, slow stroking movement using the palms of the hands. Now, they re really need to write all that. So it obviously smooth, great, you know, stroke, uh, stroking movement. But you've got to also use it right the using of uh, the palms of the hands and petrosov slow deep needy movement uh using the pads uh of their fingertips so really again that is a structured response question it's got ao1 in there and ao2 and we both know we all know that ao1 marks are uh, you know there's 24 possible marks for ao1 and 24 possible marks for ao2 I'm just going to go through the extended response question here. Um, so let's unpack this one. You know, uh, this requires the learner, as I've stated, to write a longer written response using sentences and paragraphs. And these are usually candidates, you know, it's asking the candidate to discuss and explain the, you know, the services that they're going to be carrying out from that uh, short case study or scenario. And the level of detail should be gauged from the questions and the number of marks. And we know this is a 12 mark question. This is all about Barbara, who's visiting the salon. Um, I think she's got a gift voucher in there um, for about three treatments. So what we have to do is in, we have to give them this indicative content, you know, the factors that affect the, the need for the client, um, the consultation, the factors, the influence of treatment plan, the choice of the, the most appropriate three um, uh, services that they may have and justification. 
safety considerations, uh, treatment procedures and timings, the budget, home care, aftercare, retail products, future treatments, and advice and recommendations. I'm going to swiftly go through that, that one because I'm going to take you on to another one in a minute that is in the exam guide for actually 600320. So again, the strategies here to support the learner, number one I've highlighted is asking them to discuss. So that, you know, that, that's what it's asking them to do and it's acting, asking them to justify. They're two, two command verbs, discuss something, so we could discuss the treatment options, services, aftercare, health and safety, and then it's going to ask them to justify that treatment plan for the client. So I've highlighted the keywords there for you. And remember, this does apply to our AO4 question, which you know allows the learner to show knowledge, understanding, and skills from across all services. I'm not going to read this out for you, but I'm just showing you there the type of uh, bands that are going to be looked at. So you've got band one, so you'll get a, a learner that will use a band one response, and that's worth one to four marks. Some learners will use a band two to five, um, will come into a band two to five, which will be up to eight marks, and a band three learner will be anywhere between nine and 12 marks, and band three is the highest band. And we, you know, we, we can start off with these questions, um, you know, these scenarios with our learners and then mark them with the learner and sit with them and say, right, at the moment this response is a band one response, that means it's between one and four marks. The next time you do it, hopefully they've moved up to that band two and we can see right now you're, you're on five marks now, this is brilliant, let's get you to eight marks, how are we going to do this? This is, these are the more types of responses you need to be putting into your, into your answers. And then we get them into that band three, you know, so it's about moving your learner on this extended re response question through all those bands. And I've got the bands here for you. Um, so again, that's for you to just have a, a, a look at at your own leisure. Now this is from, they're taken from the level two uh, exam guide. Um, and I absolutely love this question. Elisa's, she's getting married, you know, she's it's wonderful. She's having a, a great old time. She's getting married and we're saying there that it's, she's getting married in two months. She's got ingrowing hairs on her chin, her skin's dehydrated. Um, she's got brittle and, uh, brittle and dry nails, um, you know, so it's all about looking at her main concerns and she is willing to invest time and money to look her best on her wedding day. And we all do, don't we? We all invest time and money. So we're asking the learner here to just discuss and justify. So they're really important. The indicative content would be this, what treatments is this uh, client going to have? Well, we'd be looking at facials, you know, exfoliate, hair removal, micro pedi, um, eyelash and brow treatments and, and tanning. So that, they're the sort of, sort of headings you need to give the learners. Then time scales, so sufficient time uh, left between waxing treatments and adequate time allowed prior to the wedding. So there's no contra-actions there. Tanning a couple of days prior to the wedding to ensure it sets and it's not streaky. We don't want a streaky bride. Uh, facials a couple of days prior to the wedding to minimise any reactions again that they may have. Uh, patch test, testing for tinting, manicure and pedi prior to the wedding and on the day of the wedding. Will it be gel polish on the day? Treatment planning, uh, the actual wedding day, including advice on clothing to be worn. Really important that, um, you know, a button top or button blouse um, and the hair and makeup, so the hair and makeup remain intact. Um, and home care, really important about the home care. And even, you know, if it's a gorgeous sunny day, SPF. Never forget that factor 50. Now, how are we going to get them to do this? Well, consider when, when you give them a scenario, they've got to consider uh, when planning uh, what treatments are suitable. So again, the consultation, the safety, retail, um, treatment procedures, factors that influence, home care, advice and recommendation, what treatments are they going to have? What factors could influence that treatment, uh, that plan, that treatment planning? So the, this is a really good, a sort of a tool to use with your learners when you're giving them a, one of those scenarios. 
Now, from Lisa's wedding, I've just put a couple of all the vans in here for you, and I'm not going to go through them all because we've only got about 15 minutes left of the webinar. So again, it's about this is a band one example for you to go through. And I'd give your learners these because you know they're not password protected. Any savvy learner could download these from the website. Now, I, I'd ask your learner, would you like to go to a band one? therapist a band two therapist or a band three who would you would you want to spend your money with so and getting thinking out of the box like that so this is just a basic between one and four marks um sort of answer your band two great you know she's even there on the wedding day wonderful um she's got a two week one month before the wedding two months two weeks prior and a week prior to the wedding and on the wedding day now this is my type of uh, person I would want to go and have my services with. So two months, this is our band three learner. Two months prior to the wedding, she's really got me sorted out here. She's definitely looking at, she's talking to me about increasing the blood and limb circulation, improve my skin condition. She's talking about a luxury treatment here, you know, an extra uh, an extra 10 minutes. She's using the Latin name for brittle nails, uh, vertical ridges. She's talking about, um, you know, rehydrating the nail plate. So we, to increase the moisture. Um, again, she's got me four weeks prior to the wedding, what she's gonna be doing here. You know, she's going to be, I'm gonna be giving this facial. She's gonna be using a steamer uh, for no longer than eight minutes, which is absolutely brilliant. She's telling me that she's gonna hold that steamer away 15 inches from my face. She really knows her stuff. She's really putting everything into this. She's telling me that she's gonna, you know, all the home care advice I need. I mean, I'd gone for a factor 50 SPF if I was picky, but a factor 20 will do me because it's actually in there. Um, and she's telling me to drink lots and lots of water to keep myself hydrated and, and get rid of any toxins and help where in between facial treatments. She's, we've got a two week prior to the wedding, what she's going to be doing there with me. She's going to be liaising, liaising with the, the hairstylist on timings for the day, which is absolutely brilliant. Then we've got our seven, four, three, two, one. She's really gone in there. And it's just amazing here that, you know, she's getting there on my wedding day. Um, you know, she's going to ask the hairstylist to loosely pin the, uh, the, the curls up if it's a curly a look that the, the bride's going for. So that makeup application can be flawless. You know, she's going she's gonna to ensure Lisa has brushed her teeth before starting the makeup application. Even better. She's really gone into some detail here. And you know what I do like is the fact she's actually given a lipstick um, to Lisa so she can top her lips up during the day. I think it's really, really good. So get your learners to work through these and see which therapist would they like to go. Would, well, hold on a minute. Which therapist would they like to be? A one, two or three. And which, which therapist would they like to go to for services? A one, two or three. So we're going to go through the retrieval now practices uh, and test taking skills for learners. So retrieval practice for learners. So you've registered on this webinar today because you are looking to be able to give the best support possible to your learners, your students. And the aim of this section is to give you some uh, help on how to prepare your learners so they can achieve the best results possible. And we appreciate you doing this. You're doing an amazing job, you know, huge amount of support you give to your learners, you know, but um, we, we think uh, we can all relate to exam stress involved in preparing learners for big exams. And especially over the last few years, it's been incredibly difficult for teachers and learners. So your learners have been denied the experience of normal exams for the past two years, which would have provided the groundwork for them moving forward. So I'm going to talk about retrieval practices, and this is a really useful learning tool, and it's something that you're probably already doing anyway. Um, so retrieval practices, um, are sometimes mistaken for assessment methods uh, because it can include questions and quizzes and we probably do it regular as teachers however uh, in this instance I think it's uh, we just want to need to reinforce some of these techniques and perhaps uh, introduce learners for the first time due to missing out on what would have been a normal education experience would they have otherwise so one of the largest gaps as well we're looking at here is study skills that learners have and it's almost becoming what I would call part of the unwritten unwritten hidden curriculum um, you now teach um, obviously equipping the learners with exam and revision skills and strategies but I think when we used to think about learning um, our exam prep we typically, fo typically focused on getting information into the learners heads 
But in this strategy, it's about focusing on getting the information out of the learners' heads. And in many cases, it's not about the lack of knowledge that the learners have, but it's about more likely they don't understand how to retrieve the information um, needed um, to revise correctly, so that some areas, um, you know, so they just can't, you, you, you can't, they just can't get that information out. So it's it's a good idea to start off sessions with retrieval tasks for learners. So at the start of the uh, of the lesson, ask learners to name something about something without looking at the notes. Uh, and once they've listed what they can remember, then get them to open their their notebook up and see which ones they've got right and which ones they may have forgotten. Um, it's such good an important practice. Um, that i would introduce i put a link on here for you to go to so it can help you and we're going to move on to the next slide but it'll help you know with them not see it's not really really great we don't want them you know sort of cramming lots of lots of information in because if they're cramming it all in how they're going to get it out so it's really really remember you know remember that um you know we need to get the information that we're teaching them onto paper So I've just uh, this is just a retrieval practice again. There's a link here for you. Um, it's uh, the link is Love to Teach um, 87, and it's a really quick and easy way, um, easy to put together in terms of content and level of challenge. And I would use peer assessment um, by getting learners to set quizzes and, and quizzes up in the classroom between themselves. You know, have your little teams uh, ask learners to make up the questions for each other using common um you know co uh, sorry command verbs or words using different units different topics also make up word clouds with everything that they can remember about a specific topic service or treatment you know all they've got to do is to put words on a piece of paper and then present to the group then we have these concept maps and spidergrams they're nothing new uh, but they're so useful um, for our AO4 type of questions, that extended response question, as I showed you on a previous slide. For the extended response question, start with a blank piece of paper, um, give them a put the subject in the middle. Um, they might want to use some learners are very visual and they might want to use colour, you know, some um or so they'll use colour and words or just pictures on there. They may put pictures on those spidergrams. That is not a problem. Um, also, mind maps help learn learners to see how much they can recall from memory, and they check this against you know the version that has already been they maybe done something you previously done, and see what they've missed out and what did they get right. But I tell you, flashcards are really really good as well. Flashcards are really really good to use. So with flashcards, I'd suggest that they add um, you know a, a title on the front. Uh, but on the reverse, you know, they've got all their content. But before before they turn it over to sort of talk about the content, you know, take that title and let ask them to speak about what they know about that content content rather than going straight into turning it over and reading what they've written. And shuffle the pack and send them around the class and get everybody to get involved in that because learning is fun. Remember when we were kids, we learned through playing, we were, we learned through fun. Uh, the use of mnemonics um, is brilliant. I mean, our technical advisor, post 16, Alison Whittle, uses this quite a lot. So, I, you know, I used to use these in college. Um, and I've put two here for you sort of the five layers of the skin from top to bottom. So, corneum, lucidium, granulosum, spinosum, basil. So, it's come, let's get sunburned. Well, we don't want to get sunburned. So, on the other hand, on the next one, I've got from the bottom to the top basil, spinosum, granulosum. Lucidium and corneum. Britney Spears glows like candy. So our learners absolutely love this sort of uh, um, sort of uh, learning. You know where they can make up these. So again, it's just a hint and tip of how they can retrieve uh, information and move. Uh, you know, moving on. So I've got a few slides to go through here. So we've got research-based tips for exam success. So which test te test taking skills can learners use before and during exams? So it's preparation, pace, and completeness, and some hints and tips. So if we look here, um, test, test uh, taking skills for learners. 
memory dump can be a particularly useful strategy in improving performance on certain types of questions as soon as they begin the test. So as soon as they begin the test, write down, give them some paper and you know, write down information that they're likely to need um, to know the test. Uh, and um, you know, it'll stop them from feeling fearful or forgetful. So that's really, really important. So we have, uh, you know, pace, pace themselves um, so that they can uh, complete the test in the allotted time. Um, and if they're running out of time um, and you, if they can't answer, answer the question fully, it's important that they answer all the questions. Marcus will give partial credit for complete, uh, for partially completed questions. So, you know, get them to try and literally write as much as you can on each question. Don't miss a question out. Um, relying on their first impressions. So the first answer that pops into the head is normally the correct answer. I'm a doubting Thomas. I can, something will come into my head and it, and I'll go, oh, was that right? No. Oh, and I'll think of something else. But normally the first thing that pops into our head is the right thing. So actually get them to write that down on a piece of paper. Uh, read the test directions carefully um, and watch for the detail there. Test questions and direction often can contain valuable information and get them always to read those questions and make sure they understand the question and what is being asked of them. So again, here, uh, candidates do not have uh, to answer exam questions in any particular order. For me, I'd be getting my, my uh, learners to answer the extended response question, you know, first, putting it in some for, form of order. So, it's, it's, you know, and that may jog their memory in the, in the, in the AO1 or AO2 types of questions. Um, candidates should avoid wasting time repeating questions. Some candidates actually write the question out and, and then put the answer underneath that. The, the, the question's already written out. You know, don't repeat. Um, don't repeat it. Um, candidates should always attempt every question, like I've said, um, even questions where they may be less confident about the answer that they're going to give. Something is better than nothing on paper. Uh, they may find uh, they may find it helpful to consider uh, examples like tackling those questions that they know straight away. So it's a good idea to get them to read through the paper and if they straight away know a question, go for it. That will help with their confidence and it will, you know, it'll build that flow and momentum throughout the exam. Tackling the extended response question at an early stage, as I said earlier, I think that to me is, uh, you know, it would be a good idea to get them to, you know, match it, mash it up a little bit. Uh, and again, for the extended response question, candidates may find it helpful to identify the key requirements and jot those down in a little brief plan uh, before they go on to the actual test paper or they do that online, depending on whether it's a paper-based test or an online test. So these are the things that have been coming up. Um, hints, so we're going to be some hints and tips here. Learners will say, I'm not good at taking exams. So suggest they have an organized a revision planner um, and revision sessions and uh, they'll say i don't understand the topic uh, and i run out of time in exams well again make sure that they allow the time you know uh, when writing um give you know when you're sat there with them in class under exam conditions say well you know you've got half an hour to go you've got 15 minutes to go and make sure that you know there's a they, you know they uh, have a clock you have a clock in the room or they have a watch you'll get candidates say i rush through questions and make mistakes if the candidate finds they're running out of time um to finish the answer towards the end of the exam they should attempt to complete the answers in abbreviated or note form. Um, so provided the content is clear and relevant, the examiner will consider such answers and awards, uh, award marks where merited. So just don't let them to, you know, really, really think about that. Um, I have put um, a link here for the Cambridge International um, web uh, blog where uh, it helps students who underperform in exams. Again, we've got questions like I learn to say, I revise a lot, but I still don't do well. Um, you know, so start revision early enough to allow retesting. 
um, revise in a quiet area, uh, environment, no with no background noise. Make sure our learners are getting their eight hours plus sleep a night, regular bedtimes, you know, lots of fresh air, exercise, take regular breaks every five or ten minutes, and eat a sensible breakfast before they go into that exam. I think I'll be taking them all into the uh, the student canteen and making sure they'd all had something to eat and they'd all had a drink before they go into that exam. Um, we have learners say I panic when uh, I know I'm taking the actual exam. I think that's what's happened a lot this year. You know, our learners have not been able to sit their GCSEs. They've had two years of tags and cags. Um, so some, do some breathing exercises with them. You know, remember to breathe. Uh, you know, at any time during the test, get them to put the pen down or just stop and taking some really, really deep breaths. And this will help them relax because if you're know, stressing out, you know, the, the mind's going, it's like a washing machine head, they just forget everything. Get them to visualise themselves sat in a lovely little bubble where they're just breathing and close their eyes and just centre their mind. Again, learners will say, my mind goes blank. Um, so highlight that command verb. What is it asking for? Focus on activities that force them to retrieve that information and jot down ideas on a piece of paper before answering the question. We are nearly at the end. So further support, please, you know, fill in the survey um, or, you know, take the QR code because these webinars are designed for you. They're made for you, designed for you, by you, by your questions. Um, again, you've always got me. I'm sorry, you, you're here and be the technical advisor. Uh, if, if you need me, you know, you need a Teams meeting with me, just just email me we can get your team in we can go this from just team only or on a one-to-one -one. you've got my mobile number there i've also put on here our technical quality at city and gills email and again um there's a technical page there there's a there's a link to the technical page and their telephone number but please 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 do do not um sit on your own with this you know no questions no questions silly question if you need anything from me please get in touch it has been my pleasure today to be able to deliver this webinar to you all and I know you're on half term and some of you uh, are probably listening you know when you're on holiday when you're on half term so I'd just like to say thank you very very much for taking part and being here today I'm sorry I've not been able to even see any questions but as soon as I sign off I will download the uh, and if there's any questions I'll download them and I'll get you know typing away to answer those questions for you so take care and have a lovely lovely bank holiday